Good afternoon to everybody and welcome to this new G Healthcare webinar within the USOB online 2020 program focused on breast ultrasound. My name is Laura Taroni and I am the European Marketing Manager for General Imaging Ultrasound in G Healthcare. It is my pleasure today to introduce to you our speaker, Dr. Eugen Diviak, consultant radiologist with a multiple interest in breast, pelvis, and musculoskeletal imaging. Dr. Eugen Diviak works in a very active team led by Professor Boris Briglacic, who is the chairman of the ESR Board of Directors. And he works at the University Hospital Dubrava in Zagreb, Croatia. He's also a student of biomedicine and health sciences at the University of Zagreb. Tonight, Dr. Diviak will talk about the role of contrast enhanced ultrasound imaging in breast carcinoma diagnosis and follow up presenting the preliminary results of a study partially supported by the Croatian Science Foundation. Before starting the webinar, I would like to give you some practical information. I'd like to invite you all to submit any question you could have in the Q&A chat box. All the questions will be answered at the end of the webinar by Dr. Diviak. Now it is my pleasure to hand over to Dr. Eugen Diviak and wish you all an interesting webinar. Thank you and talk to you later. Laura, thank you for your introduction. I'm very pleased to have a presentation for EUSOBI here for your workshop. And uh, we will move on to the role of uh, CEUS in breast uh, disease diagnosis and follow up. So, I will... okay. Uh, Firstly, I would like to disclose that uh, the work presented is a part of Croatian Science Foundation project. As noted before, I also have to disclose that ultrasound contrast agents administration for breast imaging is off-label in most countries, and so it is in Croatia still. And uh, lastly, uh, I would like to disclose that this lecture is sponsored by GE Healthcare. Uh, you know that radiology is constantly evolving science and so is breast imaging, starting with mammography that firstly was uh, on films, now digital with tomosynthesis and with uh, contrast enhancement also, then uh, ultrasound that is becoming more and more uh, multi-parametric uh, imaging mode with uh, new possibilities. And of course, MRI that uh, includes uh, contrast enhancement techniques, uh, different sequences, and uh, also uh, DVI. So, of course, ultrasound evolved a lot during the last few years. And when we uh, recall all the images that were gained on previous uh, devices, uh, today we can get much better image with uh, new parameters and uh, the, our devices are better performing and more powerful. Uh, we use harmonic imaging, ultrafast technology, elastography modes, B-flow mode, and also contrast enhancement. So just to remind you on basic principles of uh, contrast enhanced ultrasound. Uh, contrast agent uh, used for ultrasound examinations uh, are micro bubbles of gas that is stabilized in polymer sheet. And while uh, first generation uh, consisted of uh, air micro bubbles that would be shattered under ultrasound beam, new generation uh, contains inert gas that uh, is stabilized in the sheet. And uh, these uh, micro bubbles are uniform in size and they have uh, almost no contraindications and uh, side effects. So this is very good technique for patients that cannot uh, receive uh, iodine or gadolinium contrast agent. Uh, oscillation of the micro bubbles under ultrasound beam uh, is caused by uh, changes in pressure and this leads to change in the shape and size of the micro bubble and this oscillation is creating echo signal that is detectable by ultrasound device. It is important to say that uh, the contrast agent stays in vascular space so there is no uh, imaging of the interstitial part of the organ 
and uh, it allows for imaging of small vessels. So, of course, today we want to know if there is a place for contrast-enhanced ultrasound in breast imaging also, because uh, indications for application of contrast-enhanced uh, ultrasound are uh, becoming wider and wider every day. Uh, we started with uh, echocardiography. This was the first indication for use of uh, contrast with in uh, ultrasound examination. Then we moved on to the liver, which is a perfect target organ for contrast-enhanced ultrasound. And uh, today there is research in other organs too, and uh, more and more indications are becoming evident every day. So, of course, we wanted to know if there is a place uh, to differentiate malignant and benign uh, breast lesions also. But, as you can see here, the initial results were rather disappointing and there was poor differentiation between benign and malignant lesions. This was probably due to uh, first-generation contrast agents that were used in early investigations. You also know that ultrasound is very operator-dependent method, and it offers uh, limited visualization in comparison with uh, MRI, for, ex for example. But uh, there are some new results uh, that are more promising. So there is maybe light at the end of the tunnel here. Uh, it is probably due to new software that allows clip analysis and post-processing of gathered data and also quantification of this data. So this is becoming a less and less subjective method. And of course, uh, new contrast agents are more stable in the bloodstream and allow better and uh, longer visualization of blood vessels. So, there is proof that uh, second generation contrast agents are useful in cases if they are used combined with B-mode ultrasound and mammography in char char characterizing of uh, suspicious masses and uh, also associ associated with uh, ultrasound and mammography for detecting uh, post-surgical recurrence and in the follow-up of patients that uh, underwent neoadjuvant chemotherapy. But still, diagnostic ability of ultrasound does not exceed that of MRI, of course. So it is very important before you start uh, your journey into contrast-enhanced ultrasound in any region that you prefer to investigate to know some basic principles for the examination. Uh, mainly it is that you have to adjust your ultrasound device accordingly. You have to set mechanical index to low values. And this is mostly done choosing uh, contrast-enhanced uh, ultrasound preset. Uh, beam focus should be set uh, below the target lesion and you should adequately pre prepare contrast agent. Uh, you should set uh, intravenous pathway and uh, we at University Hospital Dubrava uh, mainly use uh, Logic E9 and Logic E10 devices for breast uh, lesion characterization. And uh, we did a few patients' uh, examinations uh, using Optison, but Optison is not registered for radiology use in Croatia. So for the purposes of this study, we used uh, Sonoview. Uh, the dose for the breast is 2.4 milliliters, and uh, it is followed by 10 milliliters saline bolus. Uh, and uh, of course, you have to obtain uh, informed consent from your patient because you use a contrast agent. In our hospital, we did 95 examinations. Uh, These were 70, 70 newly detected breast carcinomas, 16 patients that underwent neoadjuvant chemotherapy, and uh, for comparison, we did nine benign lesions of the breast. This is an image of our hospital today with uh, tents prepared for COVID patients. We are currently uh, a respiratory center for uh, taking care of COVID patients in Croatia. 
back to uh, contrast enhanced ultrasound uh, I would like to show you a clip of one carcinoma that is uptaking uh, contrast agent very intensively as you can see and uh, I will just note shortly what is needed to be reported uh, when uh, describing breast lesion on contrast enhanced ultrasound. So you have to describe if there is contrast uptake and uh, what kind of uptake, uptake is it? Is it a poor uptake, heterogeneous uptake or do you have uptake in the entire lesion? And also you have to uh, take note of dynamics of the contrast uptake. So this is done via time intensity curve that is calculated by the ultrasound device. And then you can see it in the image below. Uh, you can determine the type of the in time intensity curve, whether it is persistent or plateau or washout curve. You can measure uh, peak intensity, the maximum intensity of the contrast signal that is measured in decibels. And also you can uh, see what time is needed to achieve the peak intensity after the administration of the contrast agent. And of course you can calculate the ratio between the peak value and uh, time that is needed to achieve it. So this is so-called slope of the curve. We also checked for the inter-observer agreement. Uh, so we concluded that there is, uh, this is a very objective method that uh, has good agreement between uh, observers. For the time intensity curve, uh, there were good values and excellent values for the type of the contrast uptake. And also there was no difference between the observers regarding time to peak uh, needed and uh, the peak intensity of the lesions. So in these two examples you could also see how uh, two uh, carcinomas uh, uptake contrast very profusely. Uh, regarding our results uh, we concluded that there is some difference between malignant and benign lesions. In particular, uh, malignant tumors show faster contrast uptake. Uh, peak intensities do, do not differ uh, significantly between uh, benign and malignant lesions, but what is important, the slope of the time intensity curve differs significantly. So it is more steep in malignant lesions. Here are the results. Uh, you can see that uh, zero represents benign lesions and one is uh, malignant lesions. Uh, time that is needed to achieve the peak value is of course higher in benign lesions. There is no difference between uh, the time uh, uh, needed, uh, the, the change of intensity, sorry, this is the change of intensity on the beginning of the examination and the peak value. So this is uh, almost the same for the benign and the malignant lesions, while the slope of the time intensity curve is very different. It is much steeper in the malignant lesions. Uh, regarding uh, the patients that underwent neoadjuvant chemotherapy, uh, time to peak is different uh, for the newly detected carcinomas and uh, carcinomas that were treated. And this is not statistically significant uh, difference, but this is maybe due to a very small sample that we had. And there is some uh, difference in uh, increase of the intensity of the lesion after uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy. So increase of the signal was lower in the lesions that underwent uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Here are the results. Uh, one means newly detected carcinoma and two is the uh, carcinomas that underwent neoadjuvant chemotherapy. So the time to peak 
was much shorter in lesions before the treatment and the change of the intensity is higher in the newly detected carcinomas than uh, in the treated carcinomas. So in conclusion, our research indicates that there is some difference uh, between contrast optic dynamics between benign and malignant lesions, but you have to keep in mind that some benign lesions may show uh, hypervascularity. So you have to correlate uh, contrast enhanced ultrasound results with other findings and you cannot conclude just uh, on, based on uh, dynamics of the contrast uptake here. Also there is probably a difference in contrast uptake before and after neoadjuvant chemotherapy and uh, I believe this is possible possible future use of breast contrast enhanced ultrasound so you for example won't need to do MRI in follow-up of uh, lesion after neoadjuvant chemotherapy and this is uh, in, in the upper picture example of the benign lesion that shows very different hemodynamics of the uh, contrast dynamics in uh, different parts of the lesion depending on the vascularity of the part of the lesion and uh, here you can see a residual tumor that uh, was detected on contrast enhanced ultrasound because it showed some uptake of the contrast which was not seen on the MRI. And some examples from our study. This is a female patient, 46 years old, before and after neoadjuvant chemotherapy. This is B-mode ultrasound which shows significant, significant reduction of the size of the lesion. while uh, contrast enhanced ultrasound shows that there is a delay in enhancement of the lesion after neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Afterwards you can also do the analysis of time intensity curve and you can see the change of the curve type. So we have size reduction, slower uptake of the contrast and change of the type of the time intensity curve from washout into persistent. So this is a good response to neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Another example before and after. Uh, you can see that there is some reduction in size from 2.3 to 1.1 centimeter and you can see that there is delay in the contrast enhancement. The peak is achieved almost 20 seconds later than it was before neoadjuvant chemotherapy. And you can also follow the change of the uh, time intensity curve type. So we have size reduction, slower uptake of the contrast and we have change of the time intensity curve. Another example, we have a large tumor and after neoadjuvant chemotherapy there is significant reduction in size. You can see that there is still some enhancement after neoadjuvant chemotherapy in the residual tumor mass and you can see that uptake of the contrast is faster and the washout type of the time intensity curve remains. So this may suggest that there is some residual tumor tissue. Another example, uh, this time there is no significant change in size of the tumor after neoadjuvant chemotherapy. You can see that peak intensity is achieved even faster than before and washout type of the time intensity curve remains. So I would guess this is poor response to neoadjuvant chemotherapy and uh, we even got some confirm confirmation of these results uh, from our pathologists. And this will be a case that I want you to try to solve. 
this is a male patient. You can see on B mode that there is a mass in the breast. It is somewhat heterogeneous. It seems uh, horizontally uh, orientated and uh, well circumscribed. So I would like you to try and uh, tell us uh, what Byrads category would you assign to this mass regarding the this B mode image? You can vote on your poll now. Okay, if I am seeing uh, correctly, most of you would say that this is a Byrads 4 lesion. I will show you contrast enhancement. Does this change your opinion? Do you remain uh, at your answer? Mm -hmm. You stayed at your answer. This uh, type of enhancement was also a bit suspicious for us. We performed a biopsy. Of course, this is a mass in uh, male breast and of course we are suspicious. But this was just a simple hemangioma. So this again is confirmation that uh, hypervascular breast lesions even uh, can be benign and uh, you have to do some other investigation you cannot trust uh, these results only okay so this is kind of a teaching point of this lecture uh, in the end i would like to thank my mentors and my colleagues especially Gordana Ivanac and Boris Berkljacic who introduced me to world of radiology and breast imaging and also the members of our multidisciplinary team for breast diseases uh, together with uh, surgeons and pathologists, cytologists and oncolo oncologists and I would like to invite you uh, for highlight week number 10 of ECR it will be uh, held online in November so please join us and we will present our work in uh, breast diseases so thank you very much for joining this webinar. I hope uh, it was useful and uh, that you will join us in investigation of uh, contrast enhanced ultrasound in breast imaging. And uh, I also hope that uh, things will get back to normal soon so you can visit us in Zagreb. Okay, we'll have a questions and answers part just to see uh, if you took some points from this lecture, yeah, okay. So my first question will be, uh, what do you think is the main difference between benign and malignant lesions regarding contrast enhanced ultrasound in breast? So is it that benign lesions show faster contrast uptake? Do malignant lesions show faster cost contrast uptake? Or is it the contrast washout rate or signal intensity in decibels? So please vote. So most of you went with uh, that malignant lesions usually show faster contrast uptake and this is of course co correct answer. This is the slope of the curve it is uh, usually steeper for the malignant lesions so yeah thank you and we have another question for the audience so what do you think what is the most likely the future use of contrast enhanced ultrasound in breast 
So is it for the assessment of response to near adjuvant chemotherapy? Is it for differentiation between benign and malignant lesions? Evaluation of cancer histological type? Or do you think that this method doesn't show any promising results? Okay, yes. Again, correct answer is A. This is uh, assessment of tumor response to neoadjuvant chemotherapy. So, yeah, this is well done, well done. Of course, we will be open for questions from the audience now. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Dr. Diviak, for your uh, very comprehensive presentation. I try to switch on also my camera here. Let's see if it works. Thanks a lot because you showed very interesting cases and I I mean I've been working in uh, also in healthcare for many years uh, and uh, sometimes I get some uh, uh, not concerns but the skeptical uh, uh, feedback about the use of contrast enhanced ultrasound in breast so that's why mm -hmm. I think your presentation is really giving some more insights uh, based on your uh, on your uh, current current study so I really look forward mm -hmm. for uh, I mean, to learn more and to get more results from uh, maybe a wider uh, cohort of patients. Uh, of of course, of course, yes. This is this is uh, very important to get uh, greater poll of patients and uh, to get uh, more results to see how uh, different types of uh, tumors are uh, enhancing using contrast enhanced ultrasound. So yes, this this would be very interesting. And very probably, uh, yeah, probably combining with other ultrasound methods like elastography. So, yes. Exactly. So uh, that's uh, you, you talk about elastography now. I think one question from my side is about uh, the role in this case of a shear wave elastography, shear wave elastography. So multi-parametric imaging ultrasound. I know that you are using already the MRI, but uh, um, mm -hmm. how, how you would infer the potential role of a shear wave elastography uh, to contrast yes. and the ultrasound in this case. Yes, we, we are using uh, shear wave elastography a lot and uh, we have uh, updated our devices. Uh, so we have uh, shear wave elastography on Logic E10 now too with a uh, high frequency probe. So mm -hmm. uh, it shows very good results. Yes, the stiffness of the lesion, of course, is very suggestive for the malignancy if it is high. So this, this is a very good uh, parameter to rely on. Okay, so that means it would be maybe uh, shared web elastography just, just for my curiosity for diagnostic and classification in this case, uh, and then for the follow-up uh, of uh, the Yes, treatment. of course. The, yes, I, I believe that uh, also there, there will be some results uh, that will show that uh, lesions are becoming soft, softer when uh, underwent uh, near adjuvant chemotherapy. So, yes, if it is a good response, of course. Okay. Thanks a lot. I think I have a couple of uh, other questions from the audience as well that I would like to ask you. The first one is about uh, um, is about uh, the different phases of menstrual cycle. Um, the question is, in your experience, Dr. Diviak, does breast glandular parenchyma show different contrast enhancement uh, on, uh, on contrast enhanced ultrasound in different phases of menstrual cycle? I believe that it, it is possible. I cannot give you a certain answer because we uh, did our examinations parallel with the uh, MRI when the patients were scheduled for uh, MRI of breast mm -hmm. they were scheduled uh, between 6th 6th and uh, 16th day of their menstrual cycle so these were already uh, uniformed results but i believe that uh, menstrual cycle can affect uh, contrast enhancement on ultrasound also so. So this could be one of the parameters you are going to test uh, in a wider cohort yes. of patients as well to yes. consider. It is probably an interesting point to test, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. The second question Welcome. is about, uh, uh, you, you said something already about this, it's about which transducer do you use for the mm -hmm. contrast enhanced ultrasound examination and uh, why, which is uh, the reason behind it. Okay, so uh, we actually use two transducers for uh, contrast enhanced ultrasound. Firstly, uh, we show the lesion in B mode using uh, high frequency 16 megahertz probe. Uh, 
so uh, and uh, for the contrast enhancement uh, we use uh, l9 probe which mm -hmm. has a little bit uh, lower frequencies but this is actually a good point when you want to show the micro bubbles it is just the physics of the micro bubbles because the oscillation is uh, in direct uh, relationship with the diameter of the micro bubble and uh, these micro bubbles respond better to lower frequencies so if you use a uh, high frequency probe you won't get the uh, as strong uh, oscillation and as strong uh, signal intensity as you would with a lower frequency probe so you have to use linear transducer with lower frequencies so this is actually the vascular probe Okay, so that means in your uh, in your scanning in this case examination, uh, you start with a higher frequency probe to do normal B mode examination. And after of you course. move to the lower frequency probe to have the better performances. In yes, yes, correct, correct. Very good. I received another question that now mm -hmm. I'm trying to read from Constantina. It's a thank mm -hmm. you very much for your very interesting talk. First of all, did you look also at auxiliary nodes? Yes, yes, we performed a few examinations of the auxiliary nodes and uh, uh, the nodes that uh, have uh, high suspicion for metastasis uh, on B mode also show a very strong enhancement uh, with uh, contrast enhanced ultrasound. So yes, I believe that there is a place for this method uh, in uh, imaging of the auxiliary lymph nodes also. Okay. I invite, uh, no, thank you for your answer, first of all, uh, and I invite also the audience uh, to send uh, any other question they could, uh, you could have, because now I finish my four questions. Um, if you want uh, to, to have, or if you think to have any additional comment, Dr. Diviak, that to, you want maybe to precise, otherwise I think we, we can, uh, we can go, go ahead actually with, uh, with the webinar. We can close. I think the webinar, I think this topic was uh, very, uh, very interesting and it is uh, opening many questions. So maybe not now, but uh, some question we invite also to really think about question to send us in the future as well. And we open also to open new perspective of uh, working uh, actually in daily practice or opening new study to, uh, to other radiologists or other clinicians really uh, joining these uh, webinars to have different kind of approaches. So many thanks to you, Dr. Diviak, for attending and to presenting these preliminary results. And I would like You're to thank helping. you, sir. And I thank also all the people who joined, uh, all the clinicians who joined this webinar. And uh, I hope uh, you find the topic uh, interesting, giving you some more insights, really to have a better patient care. And uh, I wish you all to stay safe in this uh, situation. And uh, goodbye to everyone. And uh, that's from our side. Thanks a lot again. Thank you all. Bye. Bye bye.